Hey everyone, this is Mason and welcome back to Herb Rally, typically your daily herbal podcast, but it's been a week since you heard from me. Uh, We're taking the month of December quote unquote off in order to catch up on some behind the scenes stuff, Uh, but we're back at it. We're going to come out with a few episodes this week. I just know it. Um, We have over 568 episodes, so feel free to peruse those episodes and you're bound to find something of interest. Our goal for the show is to help you along your herbalist journey no matter what stage you're at. And we have a treat for you today. We actually have on the canine herbalist, uh, and that is Rita Hogan. You can learn more about her and her work at canineherbalist.com. Not only does she have canineherbalist.com, but she also has canineherbalism.com, where she has courses and subscription services available. I'll I'll be sure to leave a link to both of those in the show notes. And also, since you're a podcast listener, uh, Rita has her own podcast, and it's called Dogs Are Individuals. Uh, So simply search for Dogs Are Individuals by Rita Hogan uh, in your podcast player of choice, whatever you're listening to this now on, and it's bound to be there. And you can also follow Rita on Instagram at Canine Herbalist. So be sure to give her a follow there and click on our link tree and you'll be able to see uh, in our Instagram and you'll be able to see all of the other uh, amazing projects she's up to. I know she's writing a book currently and that should be out next fall, so fall 2023. Uh, So stay tuned for that. So a huge thanks to Rita for taking the time to record this episode, this original episode for the Herb Rally audience. Uh, this is geared towards animals and dogs and pets, but uh, she also is a, I guess, a human herbalist as well. But yeah, her specialty is dogs. Uh, I do know I had a friend ask uh, if she also helps out with cats. I believe she helps out with cats as well. But uh, so yeah, she got it covered: dogs, cats, and humans. So I hope you enjoy the episode. But before we get into the episode, I want to read yet another. Five star Apple Podcast written review. And this one is by Neo Nits. And they left a five star ranking and they said, Fantastic educational resource. Love the varied content and different perspectives covered in this podcast, which is so useful in my continuing herbal education. Definitely one of my top five herbal podcasts that I always make time for. Uh, so I'm honored, Neo Nits. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that we made the top five of your list. If you'd like to get a shout out on a future podcast episode, consider going to Apple Podcasts or your podcast player of choice and leaving some sort of ranking and written review. Uh, I read all of them and it always brings a smile to my face. So thanks for that. Last thing before we get into the show, we hosted Heather Irvine last night on the on a webinar and she talked all about phytochemistry for the herbalist. Now, a lot of you signed up for it, but weren't able to make it and have asked me, hey, Mason, how do I get access to this content? So the plan is to host a free monthly webinar. uh, And then after the webinar is over, we record it and then we upload it into our Herb Rally Schoolhouse, uh, which is Herb Rally's membership area. So it's one of the ways that you as a podcast listener, if you wanted to help financially support the show and support Herb Rally, uh, you could consider becoming an Herb Rally Schoolhouse member. Uh, And it's only $10 a month, but if you want to try your first 30 days for free, uh, just enter coupon code PODCAST at checkout, and that's at herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. Uh, And I basically bring this all up because these webinars, uh, they'll be free during the live situation, and then after the fact, we'll upload them to uh, to be a class in our schoolhouse. So so if you want to check out Heather's webinar, uh, just go to herbrally.com slash schoolhouse, enter coupon code podcast at checkout, and you're also going to find, I, I believe, around 30 other classes in there, uh, but each week we add to that Uh, to those classes. So except for in the month of December, we took December off to kind of do a little winter break, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So so that's going to do it for my rambling today. Maybe I'll talk to you tomorrow. And now on to the show uh, with Rita Hogan. All right. Bye. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. The content in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to cure, diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. This information has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. We are not doctors, nor do we play one on the internet. Please seek advice from a qualified healthcare professional. Okay, MC Calico, take it away. Yeah. Smoking herbal blends. We need some mullin and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. Welcome, Herb Rally listeners. Uh, this is Rita Hogan. 
I'm host of the Dogs Are Individuals podcast, and I'm super excited to be here on the Herb Rally podcast. So for those of you who do not know me, I'm a clinical canine herbalist, and I've been working with dogs for over 20 years. I use a combination of herbs, dried and t- uh, mature plant tinctures, flower essences, spagyrics, phytoembryonics, and definitely combine that with diet with uh, dogs and people. And I do that all over the world through Zoom. I'm a, I'm a teacher. I teach weekly. I speak um, in certain places around the country during the year. I'm an author. I have a book coming out next fall. I'm a formulator. I do a lot of formulation for different types of animal-based companies. And I'm also a medicine maker. I, I make a lot of the remedies that are found in my canine herbalist store. I have a full-time practice in Olympia, Washington. And I don't know about you, but I absolutely love what I do. And I love working with plants and learning from plants and and pretty much walking down that green path um, with Gaia. So I got my start in herbalism working alongside my father uh, on our farm in Michigan. And he would use plants with our farm animals and definitely got me interested in herbalism and in animals. I studied Ayurveda and anthropology in my 20s. And then I took up Western herbalism again when I was 30. So by 2003, I was creating medicine for dogs and selling those selling those remedies locally and I started boarding dogs uh like doing like a type of kennel free boarding on my farm in the in the hills of Tennessee outside of Nashville and I started noticing how sick sick dogs were uh definitely over vaccinated poor diets and being given antibiotics and steroids like they were candy uh I don't know about you but you know we're not vaccinated for everything every single year and I see it really taking its toll on on our dogs and our cats being vaccinated for the same thing over and over again. So these methods were definitely not solving any of my boarding dogs like core or root issues and when I was observing these patterns I decided to apply herbalism to dogs because I felt they really needed it and pretty much the rest is history. When Mason asked me to be on the podcast, I wanted to find a subject that would be relevant to humans and animals. I'm a canine herbalist, so some of the issues that I deal with with my dog clients are not the same as my human clients. And one of those subjects is pancreatitis. I think by talking to a lot of my mentors, I had got the gist that there isn't a ton of like solutions for acute pancreatitis. Um, There are some for chronic pancreatitis, but acute is kind of, you know, iffy. And I wanted to share some knowledge that I've gained over the past couple decades on dealing with this type of issue. So pancreatitis in dogs is pretty common and it can range from severe to mild. There are two types of pancreatitis, acute and chronic. Both of them cause pain and different levels of digestive upset and sometimes malnutrition. Acute cases of pancreatitis can pretty much come on really quickly and be severe and can also be mild and varying in symptoms. Severe cases of pancreatitis often require veterinary care, including fluids and pain management. Chronic pancreatitis is more common in dogs and usually seen in those types of canines with low uh, enzymes or enzyme deficiency. And definitely they have nutritional imbalances, low absorption of nutrients and endocrine disorders because in the body everything's connected and all of these conditions lead to pancreatic insufficiency as well as an imbalance in the entire dog as ecosystem. So for dogs, it's always important to bring your dog to the vet for a diagnosis and blood workup so you know what you're dealing with. 
Depending on the severity of the pancreatitis, you can usually treat them at home. If the pancreatitis is more severe, your vet may want to help bring down your dog's pain and inflammation. And when your dog's pain stabilizes, you can apply herbal medicine uh, or herbal methods of balance after you bring them home. I know that I'm here to talk about herbs, but diet is everything when pancreatitis is concerned. So remember to avoid kibble, and that's dry food, and feed fresh food as much as possible, and it's important for healing the pancreas. So avoid fatty meats like duck or lamb, as well as rich meats like beef or bison or buffalo. Focus on simple proteins like pastured chicken, turkey, quail, whitefish, or simply eggs. Uh, Also, add a pancreas glandular. Glandulars really help feed and nourish the pancreas uh, during this time, and I would probably feed a pancreas glandular for three to six months afterwards. You want to feed small meals instead of one or two large meals while you're dealing with pancreatitis. Don't give added fats except in small, like small amounts of coconut oil might be fine, but I would probably avoid fats altogether until everything calms down because the pancreatic diet is temporary. It's just happening while the organs are resting and healing themselves. So choose bland foods for at least a week. And in the case of chronic pancreatitis, use bland foods for a while while healing the pancreas. So like simple defatted bone broth is an example of a bland food, as well as cooked chicken breast. So let's go over three steps that I have for dealing with pancreatitis in dogs and and people. So step one, they're basically allowing your dog's pancreas to rest. I like to fast for 24 hours, sometimes 48, but you can give your dog small amounts of water and electrolytes or bone broth. You'll have to see if your dog can keep fluids down, and if they don't, you might need to go to the vet for subcutaneous fluids. I usually keep trying fluids every few hours, and normally they're pretty well tolerated, but by the end, like pretty much the end of the first day. But you want to just see how things are going. And then step two, you want to give small amounts of bone broth as kind of an introduction to nourishment if you weren't able to give bone broth that first day. And then kind of work your way into a small, bland, low-fat meal. Cooking your dog's diet can work for some dogs while others prefer it raw. But you want to give pancreatic enzymes with the food and let it sit on the food for about 10 to 15 minutes to help it pre-digest. I like to like cook my dog's food, um, but I will give raw if like the cooking results are less than optimal. Again, make sure that you're giving pancreatic enzymes with every meal, starting out real slow and then working your way up to the recommended dosage. So leave on your dog's food for at least 15 minutes after you stir, and it will really help with pre-digestion, as I said earlier. So trace minerals are also important to the diet and uh, basically to the entire dog's ecosystem. So research indicates that dogs and people with acute and chronic pancreatitis are low in trace minerals like copper, chromium, and zinc. And the kidneys don't work as well when you're low on trace minerals. So I would probably start with just like a pinch of Himalayan salt. And if you want to step your game up, you could use like um, a liquid humic fulvic acid supplement. Hey everyone, it's Mason. Just a quick interruption from the show to let you know about our 13 herbal freebies. If you go to herbrally.com on the navigation bar at the top of the page, you'll see a button that says freebies. Just click there and you'll sign up for our email newsletter. And in exchange, we're offering 13 herbal freebies. That's eBooks, webinars, videos, downloadable audio, and discounts to cool herbal companies. So if you'd like to check out these freebies as well as sign up for our email newsletter, we update you about uh, current events, new monographs, new videos, etc. Just go to herbrally.com and click on the button at the top of the page that simply says 
freebies. Okay, that's it for me. Now back to the show. Okay, so step three. Step three is giving herbs and homeopathy. And this is really going to help the healing process along. This is especially prudent for pain as, you know, pain can cause more inflammation and inflammation causes more pain. So you have this domino effect going on. And I like to give aconite 200C and arnica 200C once an hour for three doses in your dog's mouth. And all it really has to do is hit the mucosa inside the mouth cavity. And I just kind of give it a toss in and keep them away from water or food for about 30 minutes. And I do this whenever I'm noticing that uh, my dog is in pain. And then I add herbs and... I have separated the herbs I want to go over in this podcast by acute, uh, chronic, and then for both chronic and acute. So let's talk about acute first. I use what's called phytoembryonic therapy. They are the embryonic stem cells of plants and remedies made from those plants. Uh, They're made through maceration uh, using alcohol, water, and glycerin. So the first one is dandelion rootlets. So the little fine hairs that are coming off the main root, they're really supportive for acute pancreatitis. The embryonic rootlets are really high in antioxidants and they support the liver and the digestive system as well as the microbiome. So they kind of tick those pancreatic boxes. Uh, Research has shown that rootlets protect against the effect of CCK uh, octopeptides, which can be the cause of acute pancreatitis attacks. And the rootlets also help strengthen the pancreas as well as the entire digestive system. So you can combine it with mature plant uh, medicine, um, dandelion or burdock root to help with the proper digestion of fats. So using the rootlets in an embryonic mixture, uh, it, it's kind of like a one to 20 and not very much is needed. So like three indi- individual drops for extra small dogs. That's like a teacup chihuahua. Um, four to five drops for small dogs. Kind of think of a pug or, you know, a, like a regular size chihuahua. Um, five to eight drops for medium dogs. That's kind of like a corgi. Eight to 12 drops for a large dog. Think golden retriever and 12 to 15 drops for extra large dogs. Um, And remember, this is acute, so we're using a little bit more of a material dose. So for those of you who don't know about phytoembryonic therapy, um, again, in this case, we'd be using the rootlets, but you also use the buds, the young shoots, the germinating seeds, and the embryonic barks. And what I love about phytoembryonic therapy is it's very sustainable form of herbalism that can allow the mature plants to um, go through their life cycle. And I love that about uh, these remedies. And they're very, very, very effective, uh, especially in this pancreatitis situation. The next one is European walnut. And again, this is another phytoembryonic, a junglins regia. And it's the embryonic is very neutral in energetics. Again, it's for acute pancreatitis. It's highly effective um, at strengthening the pancreas and bringing down inflammation. And it supports the liver and it helps heal damaged mucous membranes, so the mucosa. It also helps regulate uh, insulin in the pancreas and balances blood sugars during a pancreatic attack which is awesome. So this remedy is made up of the buds and I like embryonic walnut because it has the intestinal tie-in in dogs and definitely with people as well. And because acute pancreatitis needs balance uh, in the intestinal flora and This remedy helps normalize that intestinal flora and normalize pancreatic enzyme production. The dosage for walnut, embryonic walnut, is three drops for extra small dogs, four to five drops for small dogs, five to eight drops for medium dogs, 
8 to 12 drops for large dogs and 12 to 15 drops for extra large dogs. And that can be given twice to three times daily. Another embryonic I like is white birch, and that's Betula alba or the pubensis. Um, again, acute pancreatitis. It's quite neutral, and you're going to use a 1 to 20 or 1 to 10. And you can buy these remedies already made, uh, and you can find them at nature-provides.com. And they're also available, the white birch and the walnut, not the dandelion, um, are available in a 1 to 200. It's more of a homeopathic preparation, and you would triple those dosages for that remedy. But uh, white birch buds um, are really good at stimulating the immune system. They help protect the liver uh, and help it promote de healthy detoxification, phase 1 and 2. Birch works for both the chronic and acute pancreatitis, and it assists in bringing down inflammation. But if I had to pick, I think it works better at acute pancreatitis. Batula stimulates the regeneration of uh, Kupfer cells in the liver, increasing detoxification. And toxic load is really key for dogs with chronic pancreatitis and digestive malfunction for sure. Uh, you really have to get that under control. It also contains salicylic acid, which helps with pain and inflammation, and it supports the kidneys. So the dosage for that uh, is three drops for extra small dogs, five drops for small dogs, eight drops for medium dogs, 12 drops for large dogs, and 15 drops for extra large dogs, again, given twice daily or three times. For chronic pancreatitis, I have another phytoembryonic therapy that I use. You can use the 1 to 200 or the 1 to 10, 1 to 20. Um, black mulberry, uh, Morris nigra, it's neutral in energetics. It helps strengthen and stimulate the pancreas. You want to avoid this remedy in acute cases of pancreatitis. I like to recommend starting out with a small dosage and working your way up to the recommended dosage, like start out with one drop. It's a very powerful remedy. And like walnut, it helps restore normal pancreatic function. So the dosage for the 1 to 20, um, which is the normal um, ratio that you're going to find when you purchase this commercially, or the 1 to 200. But the 1 to 20, it's three drops for extra small dogs, four drops for small dogs, five drops for medium dogs, eight drops for large dogs, and 12 drops for extra large dogs. And of course, those are recommended dosages um, from my experience. So dogs are individuals, people are individuals. So you want to start out slow and work your way up to tolerance. Uh, for the 1 to 200 dosages, you can pretty much triple what I just said. So for both acute and chronic pancreatitis, I like to use the, another phytoembryonic therapy called black currant Ribus nigrum. Uh, it's slightly warming, so it's better for that cool to cold constitution. Um, but you can, you know, you can use it for a warm dog. But I would avoid it in dogs that are are quite hot. Um, Ribus nigrum is an excellent anti-inflammatory. It has a natural cortisol function, or I'm sorry, cortisone function, and when given acutely, as well as chronic, uh, for cases of pancreatitis, it brings down inflammation and it helps with inflammation in the digestive system. And it's really high in antioxidants, which is going to help support liver detoxification. The dosage for the 1 to 20 is 3 drops for extra small, 4 drops for small, 5 drops for medium dogs, uh, eight drops for large dogs and 10 drops for extra large dogs. And again, given twice daily or three times, depending on the severity of the pancreatitis. And then we go to our mature plant medicines. Uh, milk thistle seed is another herb that is great for pancreatitis. You can give milk thistle seed long-term um, if your dog has chronic pancreatitis. I'm not talking about the standardized extract, just the seed. Um, milk thistle helps support and protect the liver, the gallbladder, as well as support the digestive process. Most 
herbalists know a lot about milk thistle. So uh, trauma caused by the pancreas causes metabolic waste and puts pressure on the liver. Uh, a lot more waste than normal and milk thistle seed can help with this. It also helps support the liver's cellular structure and f- basically the overall functioning um, of the entire uh, basically systemic function and it aids the liver in the detoxification process. The next uh, mature plant medicine that I use is slippery elm, uh, almus ruba, and, rubra, sorry, and it it's, I use it as a powdered herb. Um, I make a slurry out of it and give it to dogs. It's really great for pancreatitis. It coats the gut. It's an anti-inflammatory. It definitely soothes the gastrointestinal membranes. It's uh, the mucous membranes. It's high in fiber and that helps feed beneficial bacteria and it helps support normal gastrointestinal function, especially during a pancreatic attack. And it's really, really good for chronic pancreatitis. It's safe for long-term use in this case as well. And, um, you know, I try to use marshmallow root a lot of the times instead of slippery elm. Um, but in this case, uh, slippery elm is, is I, th- I th- think it's better, you know, it's better indicated. Uh, it definitely can work on repairing tissue. And what I like most about slippery elm is that it lasts over 24 hours in the digestive tract so that it's not needed to be dosed more than once daily. Um, If you need to dose it twice, you can, but I really haven't seen a need for it. Burdock root helps digest fats and oils and it combines well with milk, milk thistle and slippery elm for chronic pancreatitis. Burdock root strengthens the liver, kidney, the pancreas. It has that liver, kidney, pancreas connection, what, which I love. And um, it helps it helps dogs so much uh, in general. A lot of dogs have a problem with digesting fats and oils because sometimes they're ingesting oils that are rancid. Also that, you know, highly inflammatory oils in poor kibble diets can be a big problem. That's one of the reasons why you want to get your dog off kibble, especially if they are suffering from chronic pancreatitis. The last herb that I love for pancreatitis is agrimony. Um, agrimony has an affinity towards the pancreas and the spleen. It, especially, you know, I would say in dogs, it restores pancreatic tissue function and regulates the overall functionality of the entire pancreas. And it helps cleanse the blood. Um, I like to combine it with burdock root for that. And it moves the lymph system, which is important. You can use a stronger uh, lymphatic if you want, but I have found that at agrimony really does work in this situation during a pancreatic attack. You can use agrimony as an infusion um, in water, with your dogs and give both the extracted herb and the liquid in the food. For those of you that have not worked with phytoembryonic therapy before, I highly recommend looking into it. I carry a lot of the remedies in my store at canineherbalist.com. You can get the one to 200 remedies that are very good at overall organ drainage. You can get them from laurenhublet.com. You can get them from a company called Unda, which is U-N-D-A. You can you can Google gemotherapy and a lot of the remedies will come up. For the mother tinctures, I go to nature-provides.com. I sell their remedies on my website. But if you are a practitioner, you can get a practitioner's account um, at that company. You can inquire with that and they will give you an account and you can try out some of those remedies. If you have any questions about the remedies, you can write into my podcast um, at canineherbalist.com. You'll see the email link there. And you can ask me any type of questions you want about phytoembryonic therapy and the 1 to 200s, which I refer to as gemotherapy. Okay, so that is about it on pancreatitis and dogs and herbs. 
I really enjoyed being here on the Herb Rally Pad podcast. If you need to get a hold of me, you can find me through canineherbalist.com and canineherbalism.com, which is my course platform. I will have a book coming out next fall. It's called The Herbal Dog, but that is definitely a working title, according to my publishers. Um, I hope to connect with all of you someday. And again, I really appreciate uh, Mason having me here on the podcast. So I will talk to you soon. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the Herb Rally podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us here at Herb Rally, we now have a text message community, believe it or not. Basically, it's just updates from us. We send about one to seven texts per week, uh, notifying you about new events, videos, courses, podcasts. You get the idea. It's pretty much like our email newsletter, just in text form. So if you'd like to receive text messages from Herb Rally, just text JOIN, that's J-O-I-N, to the number 541-256-2895. Again, that's join to number 541-256-2895. And to stop receiving texts, that's easy too. Just text STOP to the same number. It'll opt you out immediately. Okay, thanks again for listening. Have a great rest of your day.